you guys, Tomboy601, and today we are in the all new tier 6 Pan European Destroyer, the Scane. That's right, the brand new early access only ship, the Scane, is what we have here today. And that gorgeous and beautiful uh, Pan European camo, legitimately, I think it is my favorite of the nation based camos in the game and it looks gorgeous. So if you didn't catch our Wednesday video, we were talking about how these ships are played and we have a kind of example of how you should play it right here with the Scani. As far as our build goes, well, we are running the good old Jersey Swirsky with Rumble and Sims and we have the full on gunboat build going, which means we're using both observant range and mortar. So uh, concealment is not exactly our first priority. Just a thing to know about these ships, you kind of just want ships near that outer third of your range bubble, and that's when you just want to open up and engage and start dodging incoming shells. You also have torpedoes that match your maximum range, so you can go ahead and any target that is within your gun range, as long as they're not heading away from you, is also in range of your torpedo. So we set out those sets of torpedoes towards that cluster of battleships, and we had the Nuremberg sort of cross open ocean there we wanted to tag him let him know we are here and so far we farmed a little bit of damage out of him and that's what scane is absolutely beautiful at and that's what it's best at is just the slow farming of damage over time you know you kind of send out torps the torps are about on a minute reload it's it's hitting those torps uh, and just kind of bothering the enemy and making them pay attention to you as opposed to to your friendly ship so we see another gap right there we just kind of want to spread the love of the torpedoes we're keeping our eye out for the nuremberg because we're we're contesting the cap we don't want him to get it as of yet we can tell one of the enemy dds has already gone to b and has taken b so we need to win this side and then we can go ahead and cap c so gunai is now starting to push in a little bit more we're looking for this nuremberg we know he's hiding back behind one of those rocks we have open shots available on the Gnaise now we end up getting spotted but that is fine like i said this is all about being spotted being the loudest and most annoying ship we can see nuremberg's right there we go ahead and reset his capture we get the nice defend ribbons right there and now we're just gonna bug him we end up knocking out his torpedo tubes which is good luck by us and we end up also getting two hits on one of the battleships back there with those torpedoes and that's like I said, it's all about just cycling stuff downrange. You have the range to kind of put out this damage. You want to use it. So we're starting to kind of get around to the side of these guys, play in the flank. We want to be able to spot them for our teams. We are still a destroyer. Um, we can still fulfill the functions of a destroyer, which is to spot for our team. But we just need to play it a little bit differently. In this case, we are going to play it out on the edge of the map um, and just try to, like I said, harass and harangue these enemy ships. Nuremberg pops up right there. He puts in a shot at us. We still haven't really taken much damage for this game. And that's the way we kind of want to keep it. Gnaizen now, now starting to push in. I think it's him who we hit with those two torps earlier. Uh, we, we're we going to go ahead and start engaging him. See if we can kind of uh, tempt his fate our way. Nuremberg continuing to just run around the back of the island, which I really enjoyed. Because usually you'd think a cruiser should be hunting a, a destroyer, but he did not want any business of us. We think, good eyes now, he's going to turn in. We get the nice fire. One thing I do have to mention about Skane is the fire chance isn't that great. It's only at 7%, and you have, what, four guns, four four barrels at 7% every couple seconds. Uh, you know, you can start fires with this thing, and you will do a decent amount of fire damage in this thing. It just isn't that great. We do end up flipping over to AP as this guy now is... Uh, is broadside to us and we can see as we get into that superstructure we are hitting some of those shots we're getting a couple thousand if we can go ahead and land all four shells uh getting that full pen damages which is what we exactly what we want to see but uh just something to note is the fire damage isn't that great i wish we had a rather be torching style command uh commander available for this set of destroyers i think that would work the best with the play style of these boats and i'm hoping Wargaming is hearing that and uh, planning on, on giving us a new commander. Hopefully it's not a paid one, but given the way Wargaming is, Wargaming will happily pay for a rather be torching uh, style commander. And, uh, you know, 
you'll you'll get my money. Anyways, uh, good night now. He's almost down. We're just trying to harass and harangue him. And he is finally down. And now we're in a bit of a pickle. Uh, the enemy team has all three capture points. We are up on ships, thankfully. Uh, we're up by two ships, which is good. But we are down three of the capture points, which means they are quickly accruing ships. Now we're only up by one ship. They are quickly accruing ships, and we need to uh, take care of this. So we're going to head down to C and then try to cut over to B, try to get two of the caps in. This Colorado sitting behind the island right here, that's fine, guys. We're going to let one set of torps down by him because we want to bait him out. We want to pull him out. We want to be like, hey... Look, we're a destroyer who is firing. You want to come out, engage us, come on. We're an easy target. We're not hiding. He does end up getting a nice hit on us right there. He, we see that he's starting to pull out. We'll go ahead and set the, send the another set of torps right there, hoping that one of these can go ahead and make a connection with him. And now we are securing the cap. So we are going to, to slow our roll just a bit when it comes to being spotted because we do want to successfully flip this cap uh, prior to to engaging that Colorado again, but that doesn't stop us from engaging him with torps. Cause as you can see, only five seconds left until our torps are reloaded once again. And that is the beauty of this boat is just the ability to kind of pump out the torps, get the hits. We go ahead, engage the Colorado just a tad. We're like, oh, he's somewhat broadside. Let's see if he, uh, if he wants to continue being broadside. Of course, those American battleships have the relatively thin and large uh, superstructure. So uh, we can definitely do some damage if he stayed broadside, but sadly he didn't. We go ahead, finish capping the cap, and now it is open season on that Colorado. We know he's kind of following towards us, and this is what we want. We want him kind of locked in, nose into us. Thankfully, Skane and all of these pan-European destroyers have an exceedingly narrow torp uh, spread. Like, at most points, when I was first playing these ships, I thought the widespread was the narrow spread because of just how tight the, the angle is. And that's because, well, you with with the way you play these torps, because they're being sent so far out, you want that narrow spread. Because look, he is at, what, eight kilometers? And that is three hits on him right there. Sadly, no floods. I think his damage, his damage con was still rolling from putting out the fire. But man, if we could have gotten the flood. And uh, well, Colorado gets wiped out of the map right there. We still have no kills, and our team has done, well, a very good job of taking down the rest of the enemy team. Um, earlier, it wasn't looking like it was going in our favor, but now it definitely is. We have A and C. We've reclaimed the sides, and now we're going to go ahead and push into mid. There's only one enemy ship remaining, and that's going to be the Weimar. So, uh, I'll go ahead and just kind of summarize here, because... Uh, the rest of this match, not too exciting. Weimar, we're going to get in range of the Weimar, start shooting at him, not do too much damage, just a little bit here and there as he is trying to fight for his life as, you know, three ships close in on him as he's hiding behind the island. But, um, guys, that's Skane. That's the kind of play style you have to adopt with Skane, or at least that's the play style I've been playing where I've seen moderate amounts of success. These boats... Uh, they don't have the HP or the rate of fire. Like, it feels like they would have the rate of fire, but they just don't to really be up-close gunboats, which is unfortunate. And the torpedoes, well, they don't have the Alpha Strike to really be a reliable torp boat. So you just need to be pumping out as much damage <laughs> at all times as possible. And the only way I've really found to do that is to play like this, where we're kind of keeping ourselves at range and sending in both our torps and our guns. And, yeah... This, this is how this is how the play goes. Sadly, it's not really adding up to a huge damage game, but it still is adding up to being on the top of the scoreboard. And that's just because we're, we're doing stuff right. We're spotting, we're capping, we're supporting where we can. And when you do that, you do still end up being relatively up there on the leaderboard. So guys, that is the tier six pan European destroyer, Scane. What do you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. See ya.